I am Dr. Sakim Mansoor from Channel Learning Anatomy. We are going like in a roller coaster manner, giving videos regularly, day after the other. So uh, today's topic of discussion is cervical vertebrae, hair anatomy. So uh, you see, first of all, the general layout of the vertebral spine. It consists of various portions. These are the portions. You see, this is the cervical portion. And below that, we see there is the our thoracic portion, and that is the lumbar, and then is the sacrum and coccyx. And this is sacrum, and this portion is a presacral, consisting of the seven cervical vertebra, twelve thoracic vertebra, and five lumbar. These are independent twenty-four vertebra, five fused sacral vertebra, and four fused coccygeal vertebra, making a total of twenty thirty-three. There are 33 total vertebra, which we are concerned with seven cervical vertebra today. I will tell you first of all again to recapitulate the things that uh, what are the parts of a typical vertebra anywhere in the body, cervical or lumbar? It consists of a body or centrum, centrum of body. Then it has a vertebral large consisting of the pedicle and the lamina. So then it has the processes, three processes, the long spinous processes and two transverse processes, right? So you see these are the seven vertebra of the cervical spine. So atlas C1, axis C2 and vertebra prominence C7. These are the atypical, their feature are different from the rest of the third, fourth, fifth and sixth cervical vertebra which are typical. C3, 4, 5, 6 are the typical cervical vertebra. C1, 2, and 7 are the atypical. So, typical 4 would be studied by a study of the one vertebra. We will study vertebra 5, C5, and atlas will be studied separately, axis will be studied separately, and also is the, our vertebra prominence. So see the pictures of the uh, vertebra, yes, uh, separately. This is the uh, First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh cervical vertebra. So let's talk about a typical cervical vertebra. First of all, we'll focus on its body. First of all, this is the body. This is the four surfaces, and it has anterior and posterior surfaces right here, here which are not remarkable it's like any other vertebra. So then the superior and the inferior surface. The superior surface. It is, you see, longer side to side than anteroposteriorly. And it is concave from side to side. You see, the body overall is very small. The body of a cervical vertebra is small. And uh, this is the thing. So the upper lips are raised upwards, the upper part of the body. And laterally, they are raised to form a process which is the uncinate process. Yes? And uh, likewise, I told you this is the posterior, the uh, inferior surface, which is saddle shaped, not shown over here in this picture. And uh, this is the body. Let's talk about the vertebral foramen. Vertebral foramen. You see, this is triangular in shape and it is larger than the body. Vertebral foramen, a first cervical vertebra, is larger than the body. And it's triangular. Why are triangular? Because the pedicles project backwards and laterally from the body, which gives a triangular shape to the vertebral foramen. So this is the vertebral foramen. Now we'll talk about the vertebral arch. First of all, is the pedicle. Told you the direction of the pedicle. Then is the lamina. This is the lamina. So two two parts. Then we will talk about the superior articular process and the inferior articular process. Superior articular process spares the superior articular facet. It articulates with the vertebra above and this articulates with the vertebra below. This shape is the flat and the elongated and it is directed backwards and upwards. And this shape is also flat, it's directed downwards and backwards. So this is the thing. So this is uh, our direction of the facets. And uh, let's talk about this transverse process. This is 
and it has an anterior root transverse process and a posterior root which anterior root ends in a anterior tubercle and posterior root ends in a posterior tubercle and these are joined by a costo transverse bar yes this is the costo transverse bar which bears a groove for the spinal nerve this is the costo transverse bar so uh, the hallmark of a cervical vertebra if you tell that cervical vertebra how it is recognized this is recognized by foramen transverse area there is a foramen present in the lat in the transverse process of a cervical vertebra which is known as a foramen transverse area and through that passes the vertebral artery i show you here you could see these are the foramen transverse area of the vertebra transmitting the vertebral artery this vertebral artery it does not pass through the c7 foramen transverse area only the the c6 to c1 they their foramen transverse area transmit the vertebral artery so then uh, this was the discussion about a typical uh, cervical vertebra and uh, the spine is left so it's a process known as the spinous process this is uh, you see here is bifid bifid means it's two ends split this is bifid spinous process another identification point of many cervical vertebra is a bifid spine the typical vertebra has bifurcated spine so this is then the foramen transverse area is characteristic of the cervical vertebra and then this bifurcated spine so now uh, this was about the study of the typical vertebrae the four and uh, this is the study of the eight typical vertebrae c1 c2 and c7 first of all we'll see study the c1 vertebra which is known as the atlas Its name is Atlas. This is its shape. You see, look at this. What you could identify there? If it's any body, no. It has no body. Is it any spine? No. So first of all, you see no body, no spine. And uh, it is a uh, shape. What is that shape? It is ring shaped. So two two rings. So it is very readily. identified and of course foramen transverse area is present so identification of the bone it is ring shaped no spine no body so this is the identification of the our c1 vertebra and now we'll discuss uh, this uh, precisely that what is the parts here you could see this is the uh, anterior arch and this is a posterior arch two arches anterior arch and on each side which is united by an anterior tubercle in the midline and there is posterior arch which is longer than the anterior and it has a posterior tubercle posterior root so these are the arches posterior arch is forms the two fifths of the whole vertebra this is the posterior arch and then again we see this is the articular facet with the part of the articular process and this is elongated and it forms a joint with the occipital condyle of the occipital bone and forms the atlanto occipital joint atlanto occipital joint and you could see uh, from this anterior surface of this anterior arch there is a articular facet for dense this articular facet it forms a joint with the second cervical vertebra which is tense this this is the thing i show you here the joint you see first we'll talk later in a very short while this is dense and here they are united like this yeah like this yes this is you see this is atlas the this we are studying right now and uh, this is the axis so this is the dense fitting into the this then anterior tubercle of the atlas where this is the facet and posterior to that tenses this 
transverse ligament of atlas. This you could see, right? And uh, then going is here, right? So there are the lateral masses in each side, right? This is the lateral masses, which have the foramen transverse cerium and marked by that. And there you could see on the this part of the posterior arch, which is posterior to superior articular facet of the transverse process, there is a groove for the vertebral artery. And on the medial side of this transverse process, there is a tubercle for attachment of the transverse ligament of atlas. Here you just remember the tubercle, medial tubercle. As you could see, so these are the various parts. This is the anterior arch, posterior arch, and the lateral mass. So this is studied like this. So this is the transverse process. This is the, it's quite elongated, this transverse process. This is the C1 vertebra. And above it forms the atlanto occipital joint. And below with the lower vertebra axis, it forms the atlanto axial joint. Here you can see now the C2 vertebra, which is axis. And uh, how it is recognized, this is a very weird sort of uh, this process, tooth-like projection going upwards into this fitting, into this uh, our, uh, atlas over here and making the, this joint, to axial. You see, this is the, the tubercle of the atlas. Here the dense gets united. So they say that this um, dance is a part of the body of the atlas, C1 vertebra, which has fused with the body of the C2 vertebra. Yes, this is believed like this. So this is the odontide process or the dance projecting from the body. So this is the body. And then uh, there is a spine, thick spine, which is bifid. This is vertebral foramen. This is a superior articular facet which articulates with the C1 vertebra, where is formed the atlanto axial joint. Here you could see this again. Here you see the joints, right? This is the atlanto axial joint. This is the, our lateral mass of the atlas. This is dense and this is axis. And this is the median Atlanto axial joint. This is parts of the Atlanto axial joint. Median and lateral. And uh, the last, we have to study the vertebra prominence, the third atypical cervical vertebra, which is marked by a very long spine, which can be felt below the knuckle fold on the surface by your hands. This is the spine. This is the spine of the C7. It has a body and a vertebral foramen. As you see here, the uh, foramen transverse area are small and they can be more than one, two. And sometimes they are absent. And the spine is different from the rest of the vertebra that it, it is not bifid. It is single, though it has two tubercles. This is a few words about the C. Seven vertebra. With a few ligaments, just remember the name. The apex of the dance has the apical ligament of the dance. And then I'll uh, show you anterior longitudinal ligament, anterior longitudinal ligament attached to the anterior parts of the body of the vertebrae, and the posterior longitudinal ligament attached to the posterior aspects of the body of the vertebrae. These are the two ligaments. So this is a basi occiput and this ligament, I told you, apical. So some uh, important applied for the clinical aspects of the, this part of the vertebrae, the cervical vertebra, very important is a cervical rib. This you could see, this is the cervical rib, this you could see, emerging from the C7 vertebra body and it could be attached to the first rib. This is first, this is cervical rib. And if it's longer than uh, five centimeter, it can compress the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery. So this produces numbness and tingling pain on the medial side of the forearm and the arm. So this is a cervical rib. 
So that's just what is judicial hanging. It's very important rule of the this dance. What happened in the hanging? Hanging uh, this dance breaks and it compresses the middle lobe longata where the vital respiratory centers are present. So the phrenic nerve is paralyzed. Diaphragm is paralyzed muscle. So there is no respiration so immediately. There is judicial hanging. So the respiratory centers, respiratory centers are destroyed, and the person dies. This is the second applied aspect. That is important is the disc prolapse with so the disc herniation, and it occurs at the mostly C6 vertebra above or below that. C6 vertebra, disc prolapse, C6 or C7. So it's quite common. Lower cervical level has disc prolapse. Then uh, there is the occipitalization of atlas. What's that? C1 vertebra get fused with the occipital bone and it needs um, surgical decompression because it can be to serious results due to compression of the spinal cord at that level. Then is the vertebro basilar insufficiency. What is that? You know, there are joints um, between the vertebrae, the Lushka joints. If the there is formation of the osteophytes there. They can compress the vertebral artery and the blood flow to the brain is compromised leading to vertigo and giddiness. And there is a vertebral basilar insufficiency. So amongst other applied aspects, there could be various dislocations of the cervical spine and the fractures of the cervical spine, various level, with spine, with the chest presses, etc. So I told you these applied aspects and summarizing this uh, on the cervical vertebra. I thank you very much for listening to me and uh, inshallah next we will be doing very soon another topic 